Dr. Roger Seholt opens the discussion with a compelling story about a 15-year-old boy diagnosed with lymphoblastic leukemia who developed a life-threatening flesh-eating fungal infection in his lungs. Despite aggressive antifungal treatments and even the removal of one lung, the boy's condition worsened and doctors gave him only two days to live. His sole wish was to go outside and feel the sunlight. Remarkably, after being taken outdoors and exposed to natural sunlight and a specialized light device called the Firefly, his infection began to recede dramatically. Within days, his white blood cell count improved, oxygen requirements decreased, and a CT scan showed a 60 to 70% reduction in lung infection. This story profoundly impacted Dr. Sahult, highlighting the underestimated healing power of sunlight beyond just vitamin D production. This case exemplifies how sunlight exposure can have rapid and significant effects on the immune system and recovery, even in critically ill patients. It challenges the conventional hospital practice of keeping patients indoors and suggests that integrating natural light exposure into patient care could improve outcomes. Dr. Seholt advocates for hospitals to redesign spaces to allow patients easier access to sunlight recalling historical hospital designs where beds could be wheeled onto verandas for fresh air and light. Dr. Seholt introduces a comprehensive framework he calls the Eight Pillars of Health, which he uses to guide his approach to longevity and well-being. These pillars include nutrition, exercise, water, air, sunlight, temperance, rest, and trust. He explains that the human body is like a chain made up of multiple organ systems, each representing a link. Disease occurs when one or more of these links weaken or erode. Modern medicine often focuses on treating the weakest link with medications, which can have side effects impacting other links. However, the goal should be to strengthen all links through lifestyle interventions. Exercise is highlighted as a powerful pillar that not only improves physical fitness but also reduces stroke risk and depression. Water, beyond hydration, includes the therapeutic use of heat and cold to stimulate immune function. Air quality and exposure to natural environments enhance immune responses and relaxation. Temperance involves avoiding toxins, such as tobacco and excessive alcohol. Rest, including quality sleep and periodic breaks from technology, is essential for recovery. Finally, trust, particularly faith and spiritual well-being, plays a crucial role in mental health and resilience. A major theme of the podcast is the multifaceted benefits of sunlight, which Dr. Seholt argues have been grossly underestimated. While vitamin D production is the most well-known benefit, sunlight also delivers infrared light that penetrates deeply into the body, up to about 8 centimeters, and stimulates mitochondrial function. This infrared radiation upregulates melatonin production within mitochondria, a powerful antioxidant that protects cells from oxidative stress, which is implicated in diseases like dementia, cardiovascular disease, and diabetes. Dr. Sayhelt stresses that vitamin D supplements alone cannot replicate the full benefits of sunlight. He explains that vitamin D levels often serve as a marker for sunlight exposure rather than being the sole therapeutic agent people with higher vitamin D levels tend to be those who spend more time outdoors receiving the full spectrum of sunlight, including infrared light. This insight reframes how we think about sunlight and challenges the notion that supplements can replace natural sun exposure. Delving deeper into the science, Dr. Sehelt discusses mitochondrial dysfunction as a root cause of many chronic diseases and aging. Mitochondria, the powerhouses of cells produce energy but also generate oxidative stress, which damages cells over time. As people age, mitochondrial efficiency declines by about 70%, leading to symptoms such as fatty liver, congested heart, and cognitive decline. Sunlight's infrared radiation plays a critical role in maintaining mitochondrial health by stimulating melatonin production within mitochondria, which acts as a cooling system to reduce oxidative stress. This mechanism helps preserve energy production and cellular function. The COVID-19 pandemic underscored the importance of mitochondrial health, as patients with chronic diseases linked to mitochondrial dysfunction were more vulnerable to severe illness. Dr. Seholt connects this to the virus's interference with cellular receptors involved in oxidative stress regulation, further emphasizing the protective role of sunlight. 
While vitamin D supplementation is beneficial, especially in populations at risk of deficiency, Dr. Seal cautions that it is not a panacea. Clinical observations during the COVID-19 pandemic showed that although patients with higher vitamin D levels fared better, supplementing vitamin D in hospitalized patients did not significantly alter outcomes. This suggests that vitamin D levels are more indicative of overall sun exposure and health status rather than the direct cause of improved outcomes. He recommends supplementation primarily during times or in locations where sunlight exposure is insufficient, such as in winter months or in higher latitudes. He also advises monitoring vitamin D levels to avoid toxicity as it is a fat-soluble vitamin that can accumulate in the body. Foods like mushrooms and fatty fish can provide vitamin D, but natural sunlight remains the most effective source for holistic health benefits. The podcast explores emerging therapies involving red and near-infrared light, known as photobiomodulation. These therapies use specific wavelengths of light, such as 670 nanometers, to stimulate mitochondrial function and improve cellular metabolism. Studies have shown that even brief exposures, around 15 minutes, can enhance mitochondrial efficiency, improve glucose metabolism, and increase collagen production in the skin, contributing to anti-aging effects. Dr. Seholt shares personal experiences with red light devices, such as masks and saunas, which have become popular for skin health and systemic benefits. While natural sunlight is ideal, these devices can serve as useful adjuncts, especially for people who spend most of their time indoors or live in cloudy climates. The systemic effects of localized red light therapy suggest that targeted treatments can influence overall health, though more research is needed to fully understand the mechanisms. Light exposure through the eyes regulates the circadian rhythm, the body's internal clock that governs sleep-wake cycles and hormonal balance. Dr. Seholt explains that morning light, particularly blue-enriched light, helps reset the circadian rhythm, improving alertness and mood. Seasonal affective disorder SAD, lamps mimic natural sunlight and are effective in treating depression related to low light exposure in winter months or high latitudes. Conversely, Exposure to artificial blue light at night from screens and LED bulbs disrupts melatonin production and delays sleep onset, leading to poor sleep quality and increased anxiety. Dr. Sahult emphasizes the importance of dark nights and bright days for optimal health. Strategies include reducing screen time before bed, using blue light filters, and creating a dark sleeping environment to support natural melatonin rhythms. Water's role in health extends beyond hydration to include temperature-based therapies such as saunas and cold plunges. Dr. Seholt highlights the immune-boosting effects of heat exposure, which induces mild fevers that stimulate interferon production, a key antiviral molecule in the innate immune system. Finnish sauna studies show that frequent sauna use correlates with reduced cardiovascular mortality and improved immune resilience. Cold exposure following heat therapy causes vasoconstriction, which helps retain core body temperature and mobilizes white blood cells into circulation, enhancing immune surveillance. This hot-cold contrast therapy has been practiced for centuries and is supported by modern research as a way to strengthen the body's defenses and improve overall health. Dr. Sehelt discusses the importance of fresh air and natural environments for health. Beyond oxygen and carbon dioxide balance, exposure to phytoncides, aromatic compounds released by trees and plants, has been shown to boost natural killer cell activity and reduce stress. Studies from Japan's Hinoki cypress forests demonstrate that even brief exposure to these natural compounds can enhance immune function and promote relaxation. Indoor environments often have poor air quality due to lack of ventilation and accumulation of carbon dioxide, which impairs cognitive function. Simple measures like opening windows, avoiding recirculated air, and incorporating plants indoors can improve air quality. Spending time outdoors in green space spaces offers compounded benefits by combining fresh air, sunlight, exercise, and mental restoration. Temperance, or moderation, is a pillar that focuses on avoiding harmful substances that erode health. Dr. Sahilt, as a pulmonologist, frequently encounters patients suffering from lung diseases related to smoking and liver failure due to alcohol abuse. He also notes the rising impact of stimulant abuse in his community. 
Avoiding toxins reduces the burden on organ systems and preserves the integrity of the body's links. Temperance also includes being mindful of environmental toxins and lifestyle choices that contribute to chronic disease. This pillar complements the others by preventing unnecessary damage and allowing the body's natural healing mechanisms to function optimally. The final pillar, trust, addresses the psychological and spiritual dimensions of health. Dr. Seholt reviews evidence showing that people with a strong faith or trust in a higher power experience lower levels of anxiety, depression, and stress. This effect is partly attributed to the social support of faith communities and the psychological comfort of believing in forgiveness and purpose. Studies indicate that unconditional forgiveness, often rooted in spiritual beliefs, correlates with better mental health outcomes. Integrating faith into therapeutic approaches can enhance the effectiveness of treatments for anxiety and depression. Dr. Sehelt emphasizes that faith-based interventions should always respect individual beliefs and consent.